interest tax deductibility, right? Um, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Some of the actual, you know, ins and outs of what's exempt uh, being revealed by the government today. Six weeks these rules are going to probably take to bed in. So it's open for submissions. Hamish Patel here from Mortgages Online. Of course, I'm not a tax advisor, so always seek your own tax advice. Um, I guess the key thing here is that new builds are exempt from these interest tax deductibility changes, right? So if you have a new build property, um, you can still deduct interest, and that's transferable. So if you sell it to someone else, they can also have that up to 20 years. That's the, basically the rules. Now, the other interesting thing which I was keeping an eye out for, converting an existing dwelling into multiple new dwellings. So adding another income part, I mean, another rental, say a relocatable house or another kitchen, um, could mean that you can still claim interest. How much of the existing loan, I would be interested to find out because obviously that existing loan is for the land as well. Um, if it's for the whole amount, that would be great, obviously refinancing so look these rules the lack of interest tax deductibility is going to be phased out over the next few years i've had some questions around hey if i refinance my home loan can i still uh you know carry forward uh the interest tax deductibility i still have uh so yes you you can so you can still have that phased approach even if you swap providers um now what other properties are exempt from in these interest tax deductibility rules? Employee accommodation, I thought that was kind of interesting if you own a business. Uh, hotels, motels, um, hostels are exempt. And if you um, basically le leasing to or renting to Kayang Aura, uh, that's also going to be, um, the interest will still be tax deductible. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, now, there is some rollover relief, so if you're doing some transferring over to trusts and things like that, and you're worried that you lose the little tax deductibility that you've got, the phased out tax deductibility, then there is going to be some relief for that, uh, which I thought was interesting. So look, overall, uh, this is the this is starting to the exemptions are starting to be crystallised here, and um, it's going to mean that uh, some people are going to have to get some specialist tax advice, and then probably even you know, reconsider how they do their investments going forward. Comparing a new build to an existing home loan is becoming more of a thing. We can give you some very rough generic ideas of how to calculate that. Uh, obviously, the accountants uh, obviously are the best uh, people to do that for you. But um, yeah, it, it, it's interesting what's out there uh, at the moment. Uh, there are some other really interesting pieces in this, and I'll probably look at um, getting further, diving further into it. This has just come out now, so um, it's, yeah, I think at the end of the day, we just got to, you know, you got to you got to play the cards you've been dealt, and um, you've got to try and find a uh, in property, property investment, still a great thing for many people, and existing homes for property investment still has its benefits as well, still has a lot of merits, but it looks like there is definitely um, a lot more, you know, a, a lot more uh, push towards doing new builds um, and buying new builds. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting how this thing pans out years from now when you, when you actually look at what the price difference might be on a house that was a new build, carries tax deductibility, that might be some actual... You marketing or advertising blurbs you might see as um, interest tax deductibility available on this property. Uh, yeah, so look, thank you for listening. Hopefully that's been interesting.